Hello boys and girls, welcome to a new IGCSE physics video. If you watch my video previously, you know there will be a new kind of question in paper 6, design the experiment question. The reason why I make this video is to show you that how to do this efficiently and you will know the expectation and also pay attention that uh, these kind of questions become a compulsory part in paper 6 since last year and therefore doing this kind of question can help you to secure uh, 7 marks because every year since 2016 we have 7 marks out of 40 in paper 6 and therefore you should you know get some practice and train your speed because uh, usually it is uh, more than fill in the blanks question but this one will be more like an essay question for the student last year, they are not that lucky because they only got the specimen paper as an example to read and to try it out. Uh, but for you guys, uh, if you are taking the exam in the coming this year, then you have in total eight questions in total to practice. So you can find in different time zone, uh, they all have one of these questions which all contain seven marks in total and in this video i will perform uh together with you for the june uh time zone uh these three time zones questions so make sure you have done this first and go through the video uh to check your answer before we talk about any uh, example onwards i would want to talk about the usual format for this kind of question so basically i would say there are six aspects the first one is uh, i would recommend although the question always say is not mandatory uh, but i would strongly recommend you to do is to draw the diagram uh, and you should always label it uh, next is very traditionally and the, the question will tell you as well the three variables are iv dv and cvs for iv is something that you you set uh, or you may say as a uh, input for dv dependent variable is basically what you measure uh, as known as output so uh, for control variable i think it's very obvious it's something that you keep it as constant so that uh, you can have uh, a fair test uh, for control variable i would say to be safe if you if you are aiming for uh, a star then i would say uh, at least write three control variables uh, that will be fine enough usually they may only require about uh, one or two but i would say uh, always write three control variables uh, after that it will be the procedures and uh, some reminder some tips for you is that uh, you should always try to say uh, repeat the experiment and you know after that you got different value different uh, result right and then you can take the average and this is uh, exceptionally important when you say uh, you want to improve the accuracy and remember come on you are not the one doing the experiment so it doesn't really hurt you so much to say uh, this sentence uh, let's say you repeat the experiment three times or even uh, five times and you take the average of course you, you make it sensible you won't you will you should not be saying oh let's do it nine thousand times and repeat uh, I mean take the average uh, so be sensible having three to five times is uh, pretty good enough uh, sometimes the uh, question will require you to write down some precaution to make it more uh, accurate so uh, there's some tips for you is uh, do not blame the two is uh, this is something that I mentioned before as well and also do not say uh, more carefully let's say if you are trying to take the measurement don't simply say oh I would uh, measure carefully because carefully is very vague and uh, sometimes you it's okay to say uh, you do it slowly sometimes it's fine but carefully is certainly not acceptable in the IGCSE exam uh, number five is the uh, table and graphs uh, sometimes the table is better sometimes the graph is better it really depends on the situation but uh, no matter what you should remember to put on the units and later on I'll show you some examples and lastly is the deduction I will uh, I will try to not to say it is a conclusion because uh, it's not about uh, how your prediction is uh, that means uh, what your prediction on the exper experiment result is instead is to how to interpret the result from the experiment you should tell 
the uh, marker how you can do that so I'll call it deduction instead uh, so make sure you write your answer and your you know your answer explicitly and assuming uh, the markers know nothing about your experiment therefore you can always secure and be safe okay so let's try to look at the first question from uh, 2016 uh, time zone 1 June uh, so this question is uh, more like about uh, the, the insulation of uh, you know different materials on the rates of cooling of hot water so basically you put some hot water and wait there and let them cool and see how fast they cool uh, so there are something that uh, you should be highlighting and you can see there are three different kinds of containers like glass one plastic and a copper can uh, and if you look at the question uh, it, it asks you to plan an experiment to investigate for different free insulating material so remember is the insulating materials that you add on but not the uh, beaker itself. So um, I would say uh, you is is one of the trick here. You you should choose only one of the container, but not three of them. Of course, you can say uh, I'll repeat for three different materials on three different kinds of container. So uh, you can you know you can compare with that as well. But I would say just simply get one of the container will be good enough here. So I assume you remember the format that I mentioned earlier and the first one is to do the diagram. So this is diagram I draw and don't forget to label it and you, you, you can see there are some stand, uh, the clamp, the lid, hot water, uh, thermometer, you know, the can as well. I chose copper can and I'll tell you uh, later on why. Um, for three variables, so the first one independent the input is uh, you choose three different kind of insulation materials obviously and although the question did not say about what material it is you should specify here I would say uh, if, if I were you I will definitely specify here so I would say um, wool, aluminium foil and paper for dependent variable is uh, the output so basically it's a temperature change for control variable uh, remember I said uh, you should at least write three of the control variables here and here are some example here uh, six in total but uh, I, I would say if you can write three that's very good enough uh, uh, something that you should uh, pay attention is uh, you should always use the word uh, same constant uh, well actually I should write same here same same the word here same starting temperature as well to be safe as well uh, same duration of experiment same source as well uh, anyway, so uh, for the procedures, I think it's uh, very simple. What you do is uh, you set up the apparatus as shown here, and uh, I will start with wool. So I simply say uh, wool as insulation, and you fill up the can with water. I use boiling water, so that means it should be 100 degrees Celsius. But I don't really start the experiment at 100 degrees Celsius, cause you never know when you pour the water into the can it basically instantly drop the temperature so it's not wise and not accurate as well to use uh, directly boiling water so you see uh, how I do it instead so look at number three I will start the timer when the temperature you know there is a thermometer the temperature of the water drop to 90 degrees Celsius first and then you start the timer and wait for 10 minutes so here um, there's no definite answer for how long we should do but you should be sensible so it's like um, you would not say uh, let's wait for uh, uh, eight hours this is nonsense be because if you think about it probably all of them will go to the room temperature if you wait for eight hours so I would say 10 minutes or a few uh, five minutes will be good enough uh, number four you're going to record the final temperature of course you find the change of temperature and number five of course you need to mention that uh, you are going to repeat the experiment with different materials so that's my wording here I also do another set with no insulation so this is going to be a control uh, experiment as well number six remember I mentioned about uh, repeat the experiment always 
since you are not actually the one doing it. Uh, but if you repeat the experiment and take the average, definitely uh, it will make the accuracy higher. So this is something that I, I will mention. Uh, precaution. Uh, although in this question, if you look at the questions again, uh, they did not ask us to write the precaution, but I will still write it. Uh, if you have time, maybe you can skip this part first, if that's the case, and come after you completed the whole paper six, and when you still find time, it's better for you to come back and write here. And uh, you can see number one, I would say I will cover with a lid because uh, the heat will not go out uh, by convection that easily uh, from the top of the container. Number two, I would say uh, you can see I use a clamp to clamp the, the um, thermometer and uh, the reason is uh, because I want to put the probe, you know the part where, which detect the temperature to be at the center of the can. If you really try to do this experiment at school, you will find if we just let the thermometer to stay at the bottom of the container, it would not be that obvious because uh, the temperature doesn't change that much uh, at the bottom or that uh, representable representative to the whole uh, liquid inside. For the deduction or you may say uh, conclusion, I would say uh, to conclude the material with the greatest temperature drop would, have, would be the worst insulator obviously and vice versa. Uh, but I would still use the word, uh, you know, explicitly saying the least temperature drop is the best insulator uh, instead of saying vice versa. Lastly, don't forget to put down the graph or the table. In this experiment, table will be better because you know you are doing with different material and don't forget the units. So I put units for every single row here and since they all start as 90 then 90 here. Uh, if you put the units here properly already, do not put unit here do not do that because um, you know if you, if you do it already then it's not necessary and this is the way that we usually do uh, in physics as well and then uh, for this one don't worry you just you can just leave it blank and uh, you don't need to fill in anything and you should not fill in anything as well basically you have done this question already and don't forget to put uh, a title for this uh, just to indicate hey this is a table for data collection so here is a marking scheme for you uh, in case you don't have the file, you can check it out and I I would definite, definitely think my answer is more than enough. Let's go for the next question. This question is from Time Zone 2 and you are going to investigate the resistance of a wire and the relationship to the length of uh, this wire and you are going to plot a graph and you got some uh, usual um, apparatus and here are some uh, instructions. Okay, first of all, draw the diagram and since you are drawing for the circuit, then uh, you should use the schematic diagram to draw the circuit. And since uh, the question given the power supply, which is more like a, like a box in the uh, laboratory, if you have seen it, instead of battery. So this time you should not be using battery, instead you should use a power supply. Uh, but it doesn't actually make so much difference. And uh, together with uh, ammeter, voltmeter, you know all this symbol. And one thing that I will want to specify here is uh, no matter what uh, experiment you do, it will be uh, much better to illustrate by putting this one by putting a uh, certain name for the variable. So let's say here I call this length with a letter L so you can re always refer to the L here. Moving on to the variables, um, independent variable that means the input, uh, something you change is uh, the length of the wire. So obviously uh, adjusting the distance and uh, dependent variable is the resistance of the wire so notice that it is not the current or the uh, voltage because uh, if you look at the question you know simply the student just want to investigate the resistance so not simply uh, ammeter or voltmeter reading for the control variable uh, initially I thought of using simply the same wire to perform the experiment because I when I read the question I find uh, they gave us 
different length of wires but I would say it would be much wiser to use the same uh, wire same long wire and with the um, uh, movable junction here to change the length directly um, but writing this would not be that precise enough and I would rather write uh, the density is constant along the wire and also the diameter is also constant along the wire you may say thickness uh, and of course you know it affects um, the resistance in the wire itself uh, and also if you have done the experiment in school you know the temperature of the wire will also affect um, the resistance itself so temperature should be constant as well and lastly, I would say uh, to perform the experiment more easily, the EMF supply, uh, that means the voltage from the power supply here should be, should be more like constant, although it doesn't really affect the result so much, uh, but it would be better if you, if you can keep it as constant. But uh, I would say put it at last if you really need it. Uh, procedures. So simply you set up the apparatus in the diagram, uh, you should, you should always say that and uh, with <clears throat> here I said a uh, two meter long wire cause um, you know it is it's a long wire right uh, and then you start with certain voltage uh, here I would use uh, 10 volts so it's more like a usual voltage you use uh, and then I would say I start at the longest end with two meter so using the symbol L will be very useful here so that you can uh, immediately let the reader know uh, you're talking about this side. Uh, number three uh, is to measure from the ammeter and the voltmeter for uh, current and voltage simply. Number four, uh, you're going to adjust the junction and, there, and then reduce the length by 10 cm. So uh, obviously you should have about uh, 19 to 20 measurements uh, in total. And then, um, I mean, in step five, I said I repeated for, for, for many times uh, until until it's ten cm. However, you should try to avoid uh, do zero cm because uh, in that case the current will be extremely high here if you think about it, and uh, the voltage, uh, will, of course, will be zero. But the current, if it is too high, then it may not be so good for your experiment because you get the wire so hot. So try to avoid uh, the shortest uh, length. Number six, uh, I'm going to repeat uh, the experiment with different uh, voltage and and then I can take the average. Or you may simply say uh, repeat the whole experiment and take the average. So this is something that I, um, I would say we should insist on whenever you talk about the plan here. Uh, for precaution, um, although the question once again they did not ask for it, but I would say using a fixed resistor would be good uh, because uh, if you think about if we don't have this resistor connected directly, uh, when it get to a low resistance, the current will be extremely high and it will probably even uh, make the power supply uh, um, having the circuit breaker on. And lastly, uh, we can find the resistance since you measure that current and voltage and you can uh, measure it by the equation, um, the Ohm's law basically, basically, but I will change the main term here with R. Um, I will use the symbol R for talking about the resistance in this long wire so that uh, it's much more uh, clear to the reader. For the data collection, you should be draw, drawing this uh, table with these four headings. Don't forget to put down the unit once again and uh, correctly. And also uh, for the length, since I start with 2 meter, it should be 200.0 all the way to 10.0. And I will say if I'm the marker, I will feel uh, much more satisfied if you put down 0 0.0 here to so show that your measurement is up to 1 mm and uh, don't forget about this blank you don't need to fill in it and lastly the graph uh, for the x-axis here x-axis is always the input that means your independent 
variable here. So uh, you should be using the length L per cm here, while y axis should be the resistance that you are uh, calculated from the table above. So uh, this one should always be your output. That means your dependent variable. In case you don't have the answer, you can pause the video here and look at the marking scheme. Last question. I would say this one is a bit more difficult than the previous two. Uh, but anyway, the format are very similar. Uh, so what you do is an experiment on optics using the uh, convex lens. And you are going to measure the uh, size of image and how it is uh, varied by the object distance here. So it's the usual experiment that you have done in school and uh, the format should be very similar. One thing that I think it worth uh, noticing is uh, they ask you this time uh, the precaution really. Uh, so it's not just me asking you but the question requires you to write it and also explain uh, what would the effect be if you don't take that uh, precaution. So this is something that you must of course uh, look at the instruction and make sure you include it in your um, answer. If you already forgot uh, what does the uh, lens do, uh, please make sure you revise on that chapter or uh, maybe have a quick look on the simulation uh, which I put a link below. Just now when I try to draw the diagram, I drew this one and I find it may not be the best to use the candle uh, although candle is the one that uh, for my student they did it in school and they have got uh, you know, on the screen, of course, uh, the image of the candle. Uh, however, I don't find it very good in this experiment since you're going to measure the image size and the flame. You know it's not very stable. Uh, and more importantly, the candle is melting, right? It's changing the size uh, all the time. So if you keep doing this experiment, uh, the candle will be shorter and shorter by, I mean, naturally. So it would not be the best approach to use candle and therefore I trust this and I change it to a ray box um, and of course I'm uh, using a ray box with a letter A or whatsoever on uh, the film here would give us a stable um, object and therefore the image size is much more reliable so make sure when you draw the diagram you think about whether or not it's practical for the uh, variable, uh, it's obviously uh, independent variable is object distance, something that you change. And at last, when you measure, you measure uh, the output as the image size on the screen. Uh, for the control variable, um, it would be the same, well, same lens basically, so same uh, thickness and same curvature. Uh, these two are different, so don't think they are the same thing. Uh, they could be two independent different variables here and they add as a control variable here and lastly it will be the same object size uh, that means the same letter so uh, I mean usually you don't change with another a letter here for procedures so firstly um, set up the apparatus like the diagram and uh, make sure they are collinear so I I think some of you may consider to put it as a precaution and I think it's fine but I would rather to put it in the procedure and I write something else for the precaution um, and I would like to set the object distance as a 1.5 meter and then I will adjust the screen uh, just like what you did in the lab uh, in school uh, check, move move the screen along the ruler and then uh, so that it can get a sharp image so in terms of word and you can see I use a more um, precise word and sharpest image and change the image distance number four is to measure of course measure and record down the image size and maybe it's better to specify how you're going to measure the image size um, more precisely so I state that it's from the bottom to the top um, number five is you are going to uh, repeat of course for uh, different object distance so you are going to re uh, repeat it by oh I missed our word here object distance for 5 cm 
for 20 times. So you can imagine um, in total that will be 100 cm reduced by the end. Number six, uh, it will be um, like what I said to increase in accuracy. I will go, I'm going to Im repeat the experiment and take the average. Um, just to be safe, I also put it down here. Precaution. I would say um, in my mind there are two that to me I think is the most important. The first one is to mark uh, the X on the lens holder so it is something like this so that when you do the experiment you will uh, measure the object distance more consistently. So I would like more like the word consistent rather than just put down the word accurate or precise because uh, you measure it the same every time. Actually, it doesn't matter to be the center. It could be even like here or here, as long as uh, you do it consistently. But of course, uh, it will be the best to do it, you know, more like the center of the lens. Number two is to keep the lens screen or object. If you have done a lot of paper six, you know what I'm talking about here. To be perpendicular to the table, and obviously, if you tilt the lens or the screen especially uh, a bit off, not perpendicular, then the image size uh, will be different because uh, the image will be distort. So it should not, it will not be a regular A, maybe it be become shortened or, you know, you just change the shape. Uh, and if you look at the marking scheme, you see there are much more precautions. So maybe you, you it's better for you to spend some time to read that. And it's good for your other questions as well in optics. For uh, deduction here, it's pretty simple since uh, you know the question just simply asks you to compare, so not much thing to talk about about for deduction. Uh, for the factor, if you look at the question, this one is pretty uh, interesting and special for this question. So make sure you really check the instruction. It asks us what are the factors for limiting the range of the object distance. That means when we uh, set the object distance, although I say it's 150 cm and is supposed to go to 50.0 cm. Uh, I'm not entirely sure whether or not this range is 100% effective. Probably it, will, it could be limited by certain factors. So these are the example. So first is the focal length of the lens. So uh, if you learn, I mean you should, you, if you already uh, can recall from what you learn in the lens, you know the focal length in order to get an image on the other side here on the screen, uh, the object distance must be longer than f, longer than the focal length of the lens. So let's say if the focal length of the lens is actually 60 cm, then actually when I do 50, it's impossible to uh, uh, capture the image on the screen. Number two is the size of the screen. Imagine, uh, just make it exaggerate. If the screen is extremely small, then of course you cannot uh, capture uh, too many image with different object distance. So of course you want to get a big screen. But of course, you know, even if, if it's big screen, it's still got a, its limit. Number three is the intensity of the light. Uh, because when you move away the ray box, uh, I mean, far to the lens, it might be too dim since it travel for such a long distance, and you know the light will get dimmer and dimmer for a longer distance. So it might not be enough if the intensity is uh, relatively low here. So uh, of course you want a strong intensity of light, but it it could it will be a limiting factor. For the graph, once again, uh, nothing special. Just make sure, once again, uh, axis x will be the independent variable, your input, and y axis will be the um, your measurements, your uh, uh, output, your result. So uh, put it here with the unit, uh, which is uh, image size here. If you uh, want to be even more safe, you can put down the uh, table. So object distance, image distance, the unit, and your trials. So make sure you really write those uh, in the full as well. Don't uh, skip like me here. I just you know want to show you uh, easily. Let's look at the marking scheme here. 
uh, I will really encourage you to spend some time to read the precaution here and try to understand and uh, you know make sure you you know why it's like that uh, I don't expect you to memorize it but it will be much better to recall it if you understand it that's all for the paper 6 design the experiment question if you find this video useful please drop the like button and share this video i'll see you guys next time